everybody thanks for watching and just a quick reminder that the next five books in the biblical bible series is now available which will be second kings first and second chronicles ezra and nehemiah so make sure you check those out also make sure you take advantage of the lifetime membership as well as the never pay again sale this will end tomorrow it will not be offered again uh, next month will be the end of the free digital downloads for everybody who got it for 2019. now i posted yesterday on instagram about the um book and about me winning the case this is the main reason why the book was being held back is because well i couldn't release the entire book and i was trying to really hold out as long as possible before we started um printing the books and uh, sending them out to wait for the approval um and at first it looked like you know it wasn't going to happen and i kind of figured it wouldn't happen which is why i structured the book and had it ready to go because i didn't think they would release the rest of the book but it turns out they did they tried to hold the whole process another two years it has already been you know over a year that they've been holding the process back but it was, you know, ruled in my favor that I can release the entire book, which before the book was 388 pages. Now it's 609 pages. The complete book is still 18 chapters. It's just the chapters will be longer because I had to take out stuff from a lot of the chapters. This, as you'll see when you get the book, is really important. Now, I got emails from people once I put it on Instagram uh, about um, people who already received book and people books and people who have books coming. Uh, you know what's going to happen. So what's going to happen is a lot of you guys uh, books are are shipped out already. So you guys will probably receive the 388. You will we will receive the 388 page book, but you will also get the full book. So once you get that book, uh, you know probably soon after, probably another week or so, you will receive the full book. Um, the publisher and the printing company was actually you know really uh, good as far as. Um, you know, give me a good deal on the books and the whole process is going to be um, a lot smoother. So, you know, since we have to basically, you know, restructure this book and, and reprint it out, uh, what's going to happen is a lot of you guys will get some of those books. But um, since uh, we have to do this, I have to push back the time. What it won't be too long, of course. So, as I said, anybody not receiving the book by the 12th will receive a refund for the book as well as the book itself so i'm going to push that date back into the 21st because we have to have more time to make these books up unless you don't want the actual full book you only want the original book make sure you email me and uh, i will make sure i send you out that book um anybody who wants to wait for the full book um you know you'll get it before the 21st but keep in mind some of you will receive the um 388 page book um but remember that's not the you will get another book you will get the full copy of the book as well so don't freak out if you don't have the full copy you know i had a bunch of people thinking i was trying to get over by you know putting out a different book that's full and they only paid for like a partial book legally i couldn't even speak on this and legally i couldn't put the book out because of what was going on with the process which is why I haven't put out any videos or anything in a minute because there's a lot that's going on with the process. It's a lot that that's, this stuff ties up into. And um, YouTube is definitely brought up in the whole thing. And um, YouTube has this unique, which they just updated their copyright and they updated their, um, their policy. But they have this really unique situation going on with um, content. And it's allowing a lot of companies and corporations to come after content creators and people that put stuff on YouTube, which is why you know, I'm real careful about what I put up now, but this process has been long. It has been crazy and, um, you know, it has helped me back for a long time, but it's over. And um, this information, trust me, they want released. It, it has to be put out and um, it's good. It's a lot. And uh, this book is, is mind boggling. I put a lot of work into this thing and I coded it well. It's esoteric, but it's going to be probably one of the most easiest complicated books you know you probably ever read uh you know to, to say the least because just how i put my videos i made it really easy for you to understand i didn't really bombard you with a bunch of jargon um everything is broken down anywhere that i think is something you have to google i made sure i provided the definition as i'm doing the videos um it's a real easy book that you can just go right through and it's long and it's a lot of information and 
keep in mind that a lot of people don't watch the videos or don't have a clue about a lot of the stuff we talk about. So I kept that in mind with the book. So a lot of the stuff some of you guys will know, but a lot of people will not. And a lot of the stuff you guys will not know, I have never talked uh, talk about. And um, it's a lot of deep information in that book, but it's 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 definitely going to be worth the wait. So anybody not receiving the book by the 21st will definitely receive uh, for a refund as well as the book or books. And, um, you know, if you do have the book, if you get the book uh, before that, then just keep in mind, you know, another one will come. But to the video, you know, this is um, it's a lot going on and it's a lot of stuff that's been happening. And um, a lot of people don't understand uh, what's been taking place, even though I put out a lot of videos on this. There's a lot of information that a lot of people don't understand because you don't have time to look it up. And a lot of people just don't get why things are the way that it is or why our mentality is this way towards these trends. So now I also posted a video about the changing over of the frequencies from 432 to 440. You guys probably know about this already, but it's a lot deeper than people really understand when you pay attention. Now in 1885, the Italian government basically, you know, changed over the frequency of music and they basically made everybody retune their instruments to 440 hertz from the 432 hertz which is like what classical music is playing at and which uh, all of the composers back then was playing at 432 hertz now by 1917 you have the um, american federation of musicians basically adopt you know the 440 hertz frequency and by 1950 i believe you know everybody in the world basically came together and changed over to the 440 hertz frequency now it's big because the 432 hertz frequency is more natural to you know the universe to us to the planet it's what it's the frequency that we have been vibrating on since you know man has came and, and started doing abominations against nature but it says here a lot has been written it says here a lot has been written on the a 432 hertz tuning preference that is mathematically consistent with the Fibonacci series of numbers and therefore universal design. Among the advocates of A432 Hertz standard tuning is musician and researcher Brian T. Collins, who launched a website dedicated to posting articles supportive to this growing musical metaphysical movement for recovering optimal spirituality through music therapy. Collins wrote, the current tuning of music based on A440 Hz does not harmonize on any level that corresponds to cosmic movement, rhythm, or natural vibration. Mozart and Verdi both based their music on natural vibration, the A432, was nicknamed the Verdi tuning. Most Western music, including popular New Age music, is still tuned at unnatural A440 Hz. The difference between A440 Hz and A432 is only 8 vibrations per second, but it is a perceptible difference in the human consciousness experience. So now, a lot of people are not going to get this, and it's one of the things when you are studying the effects of music and how it affects us, a lot of people, we experience things differently. So when a person tells you something is supposed to feel a certain way and you don't feel it, you know, when you experience it, we usually brush it off. A lot of people just like write it off as theory. But you got to understand, you know, our bodies is almost 80% water. It's what science calls a structured water, as a matter of fact. Then you have electrogenetics, which basically calls it a liquid crystal or a liquid crystal superconductor. So now in electrogenetics, they basically already, you know, determined that the way our cells and tissue communicates with each other is via the liquid crystal proteoglycol matrix or proteoglycan matrix. And this matrix shows, you know, basically when I talked about in meditation one about how you have, you know, consciousness and energy. And we know that energy travels throughout the body and allows us to move. You know, before you move, a thought occurs, energy is produced, and then that energy travels down, down the spine to corresponding nerves and veins. But it's this liquid that helps it 
travel. You know, this is why it's called a liquid crystal superconductor. We know if you put electricity in water, it's going to travel faster. This liquid is within us all, and it allows the electricity or the energy to travel throughout our body. So we understand this. So um, when you think about that water and you say your body is 70% water, it is this liquid, you know, the structured water that science is talking about. So what two things do you have here? You have liquid and you have electricity. You have liquid, you have vibration and energy happening. So if we're talking about energy that's traveling through your body at a certain frequency or a certain rate, changing a frequency, which we know frequency can change water. We have seen this. It's a lot of experiments out there that show you this, how you have you change the hertz or you change the frequency or you push you push your frequency towards a stream of water and it will change the water. It's, it's an amazing thing to see. And, you know, they call it harmonics when they do it with the sand. And um, you can see how sound can actually change the structure of sand. It can do the same thing for water. So when you understand the difference in changing the frequency or the hertz of a sound, it's affecting that liquid structure that structured water within your body and if that structured water is being used and it's what's the superconductor for moving the energy throughout your body if it's changed in any way then it's basically changing you and it's one of those things to where i told you guys before you are not you you think you are you but you are not you are what they made you to be and if you've been watching my videos i put out about the double slit experiment that Einstein and a bunch of, uh, you know, Niles Borg and a bunch of scientists put out that basically show that consciousness collapses the wave function. So when they did the experiment with the, pro with the photons and you had it coming to the slits as, you know, straight photons, and that was observed by conscious thought. But uh, when you not, when you don't observe it, when you don't look, it comes out in waves. So the experiment showed that consciousness collapsed the wave form, the wave structure, and you know it, it's kind of deceiving you into seeing one thing. But when you're not looking, it's something else that's there. You understand? So for the people who may be asking, you know, how is it that some people are not affected by this? It's because they are conscious of it. And being conscious of something or knowing something, I mean, there's two different things. Being conscious and aware of something and knowing that it exists is two separate things. You can know a car is coming and still get hit by it. You can know, I mean, you know cars is in the street. I mean, it's a street. Cars go up and down it. You understand? So you, you won't go out there all not paying attention, but people do and they still, and they get hit. So we understand about smoking. People know smoking kills you. They still smoke. People know that the food you eat is not really good for you and they still eat it, you know. And we take risk, they call it, and we deal with certain things. But what if you were being controlled and your energy was being tampered with to make you make these decisions that you believe is you? And you think, oh well, you know, oh well, you know, I messed up. And a lot of times we mess up and we don't we don't understand why we did a certain thing. And I, I'm not trying to have you guys, you know, uh <laughs> you know, have a scapegoat or not accept responsibility for your actions, but it's certain things you need to understand about what's going on with you and what they're doing to us. So when you understand that, you know, they can emit certain frequencies or music at certain hertz to mess with you, then you understand also how they can heal. You know, we have healing through water, we have healing through actual uh, music. It says here, real quick, it says 432 Hertz music is known for its potent healing effect on the body and mind. 432 Hertz music works to balance both hemispheres of the brain, forcing them to work in harmony. Unfortunately, most people use one hemisphere more than the other, creating an imbalance in their physiology and psychology. So now understand, the government owns the music industry, whether you understand it or not. They own the music industry. Now, to put it a better way, the international bankers who own the Fed Bank, who own these corporations, own the music industry, and they are the same people that's controlling the government system. So this goes back to 1919, World War One. A lot of you guys know about this already, where you had the Navy get with GE, General Electric, to basically create an American-owned music company or music corporation and they did that and you had the creation of RCA records which a lot of you guys know about this 
And what they basically did was the government took control of the radio frequencies and the radio uh, stations and the companies uh, during the wartime. Now, I'm going to read this real quick. It says, RCA originated as a reorganization of the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company of America, commonly called American Marconi. In 1897, the Wireless Telegraph and Signal Company Limited was founded in London to promote the radio, then known as Wireless Telegraph. Inventions of Guillermo Marconi as part of worldwide expansion in 1899, American Marconi was organized as a subsidiary company holding the rights to use the Marconi patent in the United States and Cuba, which Marconi is an Italian inventor, and he created this whole thing. In 1912, it took over the assets of the bankrupt United Wireless Telegraph Company, and from that point forward, it had been the dominant radio communication company in the United States. This is RCA. With the entry of the United States into World War I in April 1917, the government took over most civilian radio stations to use them for the war effort, although the overall U.S. government plan was to restore civilian ownership of the seized radio stations once the war ended. Many Navy officials hoped to retain a monopoly on radio communications even after the war. Defying instructions to the contrary, the Navy began purchasing large numbers of stations outright. With the conclusion of the conflict, Congress turned down the Navy's effort to have peacetime control of the radio industry and instructed the Navy to make plans to return the commercial stations it controlled, including the ones it had improperly purchased, to the original owners. Due to national security considerations, and this is how they got away with it, the Navy was particularly concerned about returning the high-power international stations to American Marconi since a majority of its stocks was in foreign hands and the British already largely controlled the international overseas cables. This concern was increased by the announcement in late 1918 of the formation of the Pan American Wireless Telegraph and Telephone Company, a joint venture between American Marconi and the Federal Telegraph Company with plans to set up service between the United States and South America. So understand, we know the government at one point had control of all of the music industry and they had to supposedly return it back to the people but who was these people that they returned it to who was the people that owned the labels in the first place and remember uh, you had a lot of outside businessmen international businessmen that had stake in these record labels so what they eventually would do is they would buy them all up even though we know that uh, RCA became independent in 1932 and it's supposedly some kind of settlement deal between them and the government, it doesn't matter if the people who are buying RCA and buying, being, and buying and owning these record labels is a part of this government system, is a part of the international bankers that own the Federal Reserve Bank and that's running everything. So we know with RCA, you have, uh, they own AT&T, uh, General Electric owns AT&T, uh, I believe Comcast put them out now, uh, but it's the same people. It's the same stuff. It's, they're confusing you by, you know, passing stuff along with the same group, you might as well say. You know, the big six, they buying each other up and doing this and that, but it's the same people that's been owning everything we know as far as entertainment. So these record labels, Sony, Disney, Time Warner, so on and so forth, are all a part of this uh, group that's been you know, buying up the labels. They bought out basically every major independent label uh, from back in the day. And now you have all the majors that's uh, left now that's owned by them. But they're putting this stuff out there as if, you know, the government basically lost control over the labels. But they have always had control over the labels. They still own them. It's the same people that own these labels that's in power, that's running your government, that, that's printing your money. So it hasn't been a change. It's just been, you know, uh, what they put out to confuse us as to who's actually in control of our music and it's them so understand the point of this in controlling music and changing the frequency changing the hertz it's mind control it's just that simple it's programming you and they understand that that's the whole point of changing the frequency over and taking it from out of something that's natural to something that is controlling you something that can make you think you are you when you are not 
So this is stuff that has been brought up. A lot of people have put out books and a lot of articles on this. And I'm going to read one here. It's called Musical Cult Control, the Rockefeller Foundation's War on Consciousness Through the Imposition of A440 Hertz Standard Tuning. It says, understanding and treating modern psychopathology, social aggression, political corruption, genetic dysfunction, and cross-cultural degeneration of traditional values, risking life on Earth. This history concerns A440 Hertz. This is what it's talking about when it's saying all this stuff. Standard tuning. And the Rockefeller Foundation's military commercialization of music, the monopolization of the music industry, features this imposed frequency that is hurting populations into greater aggression, psychosocial agitation, and emotional distress, predisposing people to physical illnesses, and financial and positions profiting the agents agencies and companies engaged in the monopoly alternatively the most natural instinctively attractive 444 Hertz which we know about Jay-Z and 444 supposedly to be Anse for cheating that's the love frequency 444 or C5528 talked about this before in uh, DVDs as well frequency that is most vividly displayed botanically has been suppressed. That is, the good vibrations that the plant kingdom obviously broadcast in its greenish yellow display remedial to emotional distress, social aggression, and more has been musically censored. Thus, a musical revolution is needed to advance world health and peace and has already begun with musicians retuning their instruments to perform optimally impact audiences beneficially and restore integrity to the performing arts and sciences music makers are thus urged to communicate and debate these facts condemn the militarization of music that has been secretly administered and retune instruments and voices to frequencies most sustaining and healing so understand basically what it's saying is how what I said before, the retuning of this music has been designed to control emotions, to control thoughts, and to have people basically trapped within their own consciousness. That meaning, what I said before, you believing you are you when you are not. If consciously you believe you are doing something, if something is your decision and, it, and it's not, I mean, we can call that mind control, we can, can, we can call that magic, we can call it whatever you want, but you believe something is you. A lot of times you are controlled, and this has happened to a lot of people, where you are acting off a lie. And then when you realize that you done said so much, you done did so much, you done caused so much pain and trouble, you destroyed stuff, you bust out windows, whatever you did, and then you realize it was all a lie. That, you know, what you was angry about wasn't even true and you done made an ass of yourself, and you was controlled by that lie. You know, your actions, you know, was because of something that you thought was true and real and, you, and your feelings felt right and true that was you but really that's not what you wanted to do that's not who you are you was reacting off of something that you know you should have never been told in the first place and it's the same thing it's your consciousness being turned against you and making you do things that you think is you when it's not and because it's like you know i'm me you can't tell me i'm not me you believe what you are doing is you and, and that goes back to what i was saying before about hip-hop music and how our culture everything that you're doing the way you walk the way you talk what you wear and so on and so forth has been programmed for you to do so